cervical myelopathy. What is cervical myelopathy? Compression of the spinal cord at the cervical level. Causes cervical spondylosis, cervical stenosis, cervical disc herniation, tumor, OPLL, which occurs in Asians. C4 to C6 is the most frequently involved level and that can be seen in CT scans. The natural history of cervical spondylitic myelopathy, it tends to be progressive and gets worse in a step-like deterioration fashion with periods of stable symptoms. Exacerbation of symptoms followed by long period of static or deteriorating function. It is a stepwise pattern of decreasing function. 75% of patients will have long periods of stable neurologic function. That may be for years. In the majority of patients, the condition deteriorates between quiescent streaks. About 20% of patients show a slow, steady progression of symptoms. The condition does not improve without surgery. Symptoms and exam. The patient will complain of neck and arm pain. Pain is absent or poorly defined with vague sensory and motor changes. Progressive gait and balance disturbance. Broad based ataxic gait and unsteady gait. Clumsiness and weakness in the arm. Lower extremity dysfunction and spasticity. Intrinsic muscle weakness, difficulty in buttoning the shirt and in fine manual activities. Weakness of grip, strength. Poor hand fine motor function and dexterity occurs early. Pathologic long track signs will be seen consisting of ankle clonus, clonus sign, a non-voluntary sustained movement of the ankle muscles with firm passive continuous stretch. Hyperreflexia in the upper and lower extremities, in the triceps and the quadriceps. Positive Huffman sign in about 80%. Huffman sign is done by flicking the nail of the middle or the ring finger to produce flexion of the index finger to the thumb. Bilateral upgoing toes. Papineski is positive. Running a sharp instrument along the lateral border of the foot from the calcaneus produces extension of the big toe and fanning of the other toes. The neuric classification deals with walking ability and gait. It ranges from normal to wheelchair bound. When you have the cervical myelopathy, you need to get an MRI. MRI is the best study. It shows the compression and the changes in the spinal cord. Look for bright signal in T2. If you can't get an MRI, get CT myelogram. Lumbar stenosis and cervical myelopathy. In patients with low back pain and gait disturbance, look into the spinal cord, especially into the cervical spine. Don't focus on the lumbar region. Get a cervical spine MRI. Some of these patients will have lumbar spinal stenosis and they come to the doctor with an MRI of the lumbar spine that shows lumbar stenosis, but the patient also have gait disturbance. Check the C-spine. 
get an MRI of the C-spine. The exam may be confusing because you will come with low back pain and positive MRI for lumbar stenosis. Ask them about neck pain and stiffness and if they feel unstable when they walk. Lumbar stenosis and cervical spine stenosis can coexist together in about 20% of the patients. Differential diagnosis, ALS, amyotropic lateral sclerosis. It is a motor neuron disease affecting both upper and lower extremities with no sensory changes and will lead to progressive weakness, muscle atrophy, fasciculation, and spasticity, in addition to dysphagia and respiratory compromise. Syringomyelia, spinal cord tumor, multiple sclerosis, and in multiple sclerosis, the patient will have cranial nerve involvement. The jaw jerk test is positive. Treatment. The condition is progressive. It rarely improves with non-operative modalities. Decompression and fusion in case the symptoms are progressive or severe. The prognosis for recovery is better in patients with early surgery. Patients with rheumatoid arthritis undergoing surgery for symptomatic cervical myelopathy the neurological recovery after decompression is best predicted by pre-surgical postro dense interval exceeding 13 mm. More than 10 mm space available for the cord, patients usually have improved neurological function. The patient will die earlier if the patient did not have the surgery. Surgery is usually done anteriorly with decompression and fusion. 1 to 2 level disease, anterior cervical decompression and fusion, especially with a fixed cervical kyphosis to more than 10 degrees. Multi level involvement of three or more disc spaces is easier to be managed by posterior approach if there is no fixed kyphosis. The lateral X-ray will show if there is any kyphotic alignment. So you will do multi-level posterior decompression and fusion for multiple level involvement. The posterior has a higher incidence of wound infection. You are not going to do posterior decompression if there is a cervical kyphosis. The residual kyphotic posture of the C-spine will result in persistent spinal cord compression. So for a fixed kyphosis more than 10 degree, you need to go anteriorly. More than 10 degree, you don't go posteriorly. Also, after laminoplasty, for multi-level cervical spondylitic myelopathy, the most common adverse postoperative complication is loss of range of motion up to 50%. Laminoplasty is used in a state of laminectomy to prevent progressive kyphosis. It is done by decompression of the C-spine by widening of the spinal canal. The patient may get nerve root palsy Usually the C5 is the most common one. The C5 palsy have a good prognosis. Be patient. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.